لتبلغن في أموالكم وأنفسكم ولا تسمعن من الذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم ومن الذين أشركوا أذى كثيرا وإن تصبروا وتتقوا فإن ذلك من عزم الأمور وعليم عمر رضي الله عنهما قال أتيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عاشر عشرة فقام رجل من الأنصار فقال يا نبي الله من أكيس الناس وأحزن الناس قال أكثرهم ذكر للموت وأكثرهم استعداد للموت أولئك الأكياس ذهبوا بشرف الدنيا وكرامة الآخرة رواه ابن الدنيا في كتاب الموت والطبراني في الصديق في إسناد الحسن صدق الله عظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد عدد ما ذكره الذاكرون وصل على سيدنا مولانا محمد عدد ما غفر عن ذكره الغافرون اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد أخبى صلواتك من عدد معلومات Last Friday, I was not here. And Brother Sayyid Abdullah gave the khutbah. I was traveling out of country and I was in Istanbul for a visit. And tonight, inshallah, we'll be talking about some important things about that visit in our hadith lecture after Salat al Isha, inshallah. In this short talk, I want all of you, including myself, to ponder over the fact about the life that Allah has given to us. Last Friday, there was a massacre in Newton, Connecticut. Twenty children between the ages of six and ten were murdered. And more adults were also murdered. And murdered by not a criminal who has any criminal background or who has any family members who are known criminals, but probably an ordinary boy who all of a sudden picked up the gun and first killed his own mother and then went on to killing 20 children and maybe six or more adults. It's a real tragedy. And it causes everyone to recollect their thoughts and reflect on what's happening to our life. These children who died, they were all innocent. They were all called back by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They all went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them into this world for a short time, very short time. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called them back. But it left an everlasting message for every single one of us. We're still alive. So it left an everlasting message 
an imprint on our minds, compelling us to think about our own life. Because we know, we believe that our life will come to an end one day as well. That one day is not known to anyone. Not even to the angel of death. Even the angel of death gets notified about his job the moment the time comes for the departure of a person. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him the message that now it's time to call back this person. So the angel of death comes back and he takes the life of that person. Only Allah knows when and where a person will die. It is known, but it is known only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For every single one of us, we have no idea, we have no information as to where and when we will die. <laughs> These children when they were dropped off by their parents in the morning. These children never knew that that was going to be their last morning with their parents. And the parents never knew. Not even the slightest part of their memory, they thought that this was going to be the last morning with their children. So death comes unnoticed. We do not get a notice in advance that said, that tells us that tomorrow will be your last day, or today will be your last day, or next year will be your next year, the last year, or ten years from now will be the end of your life. Only Allah knows. But a wise person and a smart person, what he does, first of all, he strengthens his belief that death is there. That death is coming. Sooner or later, death is coming. So he strengthens his belief that death is there. And one way to remind yourself and to strengthen the belief that death is there is to remember all the people who have come into this world before us and left from this world. Including thousands of prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If this world was a place for eternal life for anyone, it would have been the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whose sheer existence is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a, a source of guidance for all mankind. So if life in this world was eternal for anyone, it would have been for all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala including Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, when the time of his, his death came, the angel of death came, and he said, Ya Nabi Allah, Ya Adam, the time has come for you to leave from this world and go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, he said, no, you are making a mistake. So Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, he tried to correct the angel. So he said to the angel, you must have some mistake in your book because I still have 40 years left in this world. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me the life of 1,000 years. And so far, I have only spent 960 years. So I still have 40 years left. 
So you need to go back and let me live another 40 years. So the angel, he went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he related this conversation that he had with Adam alayhi salam to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent back the angel with this message that go back to Adam and tell him, remind him to remember when he gifted 40 years of his own life to one of his children. So that story is also mentioned in the hadith of Rasulullah So when Adam alayhi salatu wasalam was taking an overview of all the children, of all the Banu Adam that were going to come until the Day of Judgment. So he was looking at the souls of all people, including yours and mine. So out of all those souls of billions of people, there was one bright soul that Adam alayhi salatu wasalam happened to notice. So Adam alayhi salatu wasalam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Ya Allah, who is this? So Adam alayhi salatu wasalam was told that this is one of your children and his name is Dawood. That Dawood is not one of us. That Dawood was Dawood alayhi salam, his soul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the souls of all the people to be created until the Day of Judgment thousands and thousands of years before our creation. So the souls of even those who have not yet been born have already been created. They're with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Adam alayhi salatu wasalam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that how long is he going to live for in this world? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him that his life, his written life is 60 years. So he will live in this world for only 60 years. That was the written life of Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam at that time. So Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, he felt sorry for, one, for his own children. He said, that is such a short life. So he asked Allah, Ya Allah, can I gift some of my life to my child? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him permission that yes, you can. So Adam alayhi salatu wasalam donated or gifted 40 years of his own life to Dawood alayhi salam. So Dawood alayhi salam, he got 100 years. And Adam alayhi salam, his life was reduced to 960 years. So that when he completed those 960 years of his life in this world, the angel of death had come to take him back. And he forgot. And he said, no, you are making a mistake. So Rasulullah when he narrated this story, he said, فَنَسِيَ آدَمْ وَنَسِيَ ذُرِّيَّةُ أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ that Adam alayhi salam, our father, he forgot what he had done, what he had said. So his progeny, his offspring, they also forget. So we forget. We forget all the time. So this forgetfulness is an inherited, is an inherited characteristic from Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasalam said, فَنَسِيَ Adam وَنَسِيَ ذُرِيَةٌ And at that time, since Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, he argued with the angel. If the angel had said that your time has come, if Adam alayhi salatu wasalam had simply accepted and submitted that, okay, you're right, my time has come, let's go. That would have been a submission. That would have been a surrender and an absolute acceptance. But instead, Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, he argued. 
So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, after narrating this, he said, "Fahadja Adam, wa hadja Hudayr." Adam alayhi salatu wasallam argued, so now his children argue as well. So now we argue. Whenever even we are wrong, we argue. No, no, you must be wrong. I'm right. So this also comes from our father Adam alayhi salatu wasallam that we have inherited. But it is a characteristic of submission that really brings us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, when Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, when his time had come, so the angel of death came to take him back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, he was a very strong man. He was a very brave man. So the angel of death, he appeared before Musa alayhi salam in form of a human. So when he informed him that this is the time of your death, you need to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam became angry and he slapped him. He slapped the angel. He did, he, he did not realize. So the angel went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, narrated the whole incident. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obviously loved Musa alayhi salam very much. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was ready to give Musa alayhi salam a little more time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent back the angel. And the angel came back to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam with this message that Allah is giving you a choice. Either you can go back to Allah right now or you can put your hand on the skin of a sheep and as many fibers, as many hairs will come under your hand, those, those many years you will get in your life extended. So that's a lot of years, probably a thousand more years or more. So Musa alayhi salatu wasalam was a very wise person. So Musa alayhi salam, he asked the angel, he said, go back to Allah and ask Allah, what will happen after that when those years have also expired? So the angel went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and came back with the answer. The answer was, when those years will expire, then you have to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This world is not eternal for anyone. If it had been eternal for anyone, it would have been for the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, he made his choice right there. He said, if that is the case, then I will go back to Allah now. So the angel took his life. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasalam, when he was given a choice, to either stay in this world for a little longer or go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he continued to say, Allahumma ar rafiq al a'la, Allahumma ar rafiq al a'la, Allahumma ar rafiq al a'la. That, oh Allah, I want the best friend, I want the best companion, and that was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best friend of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best guardian, the best protector was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he, wa he was anxious to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, he said, once I came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in a group of 10 people and I was one of the 10. Atayku nabiya sallallahu alayhi wasallam ashira ashira. There were 10 people who came to visit Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in form of a group <clears throat> and I was one of them. So when they came, one of the ten, he got up and he asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Ya Nabi Allah, O Messenger of Allah, O Prophet of Allah, Man akhyasun nas wa ahzamun nas. He said, Ya Rasulullah, who is the smartest and the wisest of all people? It's a very important question that this Sahabi asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We would not have been answered. We would not have been able to answer this question the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam answered. 
So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, أَكْثَرُهُمْ ذِكْرًا لِلْمَوْتِ The one who remembers his death most is the smartest and the wisest of all people. وَأَكْثَرُهُمْ إِسْتِعْدَادًا لِلْمَوْتِ And one who remembers his death more than others is also the one who prepares for his death more than others. So the one who makes preparation most for his death than other people. He is the smartest and wisest of all people. These are the wise people. These are the smart people. These are the people who have taken the dignity, the honor, the joy of this life and they have taken the honor of the Akhra. They have taken the best of both worlds. So, preparing for death is something so important for every single one of us that we should keep ourselves in that position that if death comes today, we should be ready. If I ask all of you, who among us is ready? If death came today, if the angel of death came today, can we say to him, yes, take me to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm ready to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all want to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all love to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But are we in a position to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Meaning, do we have any missed prayers on our back? Do we have any missed fasts on our back? Do we have any previous years in which we did not pay our zakah? Do we owe any money or any rights to anyone that we did not fulfill? Do we have any baggage on our back? The, the, the load of sin for which we have not repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for which we have not sought the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we have none of these, then yes, we are ready to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at any moment. And I would remind myself and all of you that again, the time of death is only known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will never get a written notice in our mailbox in advance saying that today will be your last day or tomorrow will be your last day. The, the angel of death will come without notice. This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept in mind and that is the secret. This is the biggest secret, the biggest secret in the world that nobody knows. Only Allah knows. I'll tell you a, a quick story that I just read about two days ago. Another scholar had forwarded me that story. One person in India, I don't remember which state, he tried to take his death in his own hands. He said, God, he decided when I will come in this world, now I will decide when I will go from this world. Everyone knows and everyone believes that they will go from this world. But no one knows when. So he said, I will decide when I will go from this world. So in last week, he died last week. So last week, he said, I will set my own time of death by myself. So he said, I will die on December 12, 2012 at 12 o'clock. So he made all the arrangements and everything. And he wanted, he had, he had taken some stones with him. He went to the rooftop and he had rope so he could hang himself, he could kill himself from that exactly at that time. So if anyone wanted to come and rescue him, stop him, he would throw rocks at those people. So no one would come and stop him. When it was, he went to the rooftop like around 8 o'clock in the morning. Because he knew that if he went right before that, 
people would stop him. So people had gathered around that place. Maybe people started gathering around 9 o'clock or 9.30, something like that in the morning. People wanted to stop him, police came, and they wanted to stop him, but nobody could stop him. So, what happened? He ended up killing himself at 10 o'clock. He wanted to die at his time. And the time that he also wrote the paper, and he also distributed the paper to people, explaining what he's doing. He wanted to take his death in his own hands, but still he could not. He ended up killing himself before his set time. That the time, the time that he set him for himself. So no one can take his death in his own hands. The time Allah has written, and that time is only known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Rasulullah sallallahu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kafa bil mawti wa'ida. That death is a sufficient lesson for every person. And firm belief is enough for a person to become uh, rich in his heart, wealthy in his heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give this tawfiq to practice upon the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen wa akhru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.